working on these parts here and the last operation is putting the chamfer around the the perimeter of the part and putting this large chamfer in the hole that's going to be tapped later and this one didn't go quite as planned now this is the X direction on the part this is why the uh, all the chamfers are very consistent on these parts the start point is right here and it climbs so it travels this direction you can see I actually ended the cut right there uh, that's about how long it took me to get over here from here around anyway um, that's where the cut ended this is where the cut starts you can see the uh, entrance there and you can tell that this chamfer is definitely bigger but the chamfer tool just plowed it full depth of cut it's like 175 thousandths it's pretty impressed it dealt with that I when I heard the sounds it's like I was first thinking I put loaded the wrong tool but it wouldn't have lasted that long anyway that's 175 thousandths depth, depth of cut on a 3 eighths two flute chamfer mill. Actually, take a look here. Does this second, does these holes first? I didn't even notice that those were off until just now. They're consistent on the previous part, everything looks good there. So the mill was started freshly this morning. The first thing I noticed when I ran it, or when I jogged the table around is when I move it in the Y direction, everything sounds normal. But when I move it in the X, not so much. I've heard this before and the machine restart corrected it, so what I'm going to do is exactly that. Let me vice handle off. Or it's referencing all right now. Shut everything down. So everything sounds normal? Definitely not normal. Alright. Exit the screen. Yes. Save from earlier. It didn't ask for a fixture save that time, which is kind of surprising. down. Sorry, I'm not doing a great job pointing the camera. I'm looking at what I'm doing, not looking at what I'm pointing the camera at. All right. Shut the machine off all the way. Give it a few seconds. Restart it here. Computer's rebooting. Start the monitor. I really wish I hadn't done that right there. Just, uh, gluing the PVC shower uh, shower curtain to itself around the PVC pipe. The way I did it on all the others was I glued it. Instead of gluing it to itself, I glued the shower curtain to the pipe directly, so it looks much neater. Anyway, live and learn. Done here. Oh, let me restart the machine. And connect to it, and now all. Yep, still making the sound. So, I guess I got some work to do here. I'm out here trying to troubleshoot the x-axis uh, stepper motor, which is still causing problems. Uh, as you'll hear, the y-axis sounds just fine, and the x-axis definitely does not. And it gets even worse when you're trying to step at uh, low speeds. So, one of the 
one of the methods I've heard of for troubleshooting. Oops. Well, who needs a a uh, what do they call those things? A dongle or whatever. A uh, jog wheel to be in good shape, right? Let's well check it to see if it works still. Yeah, as much as it could. One of the things they say to check is whether or not the um, power here. Check to see if the um, stepper motor can turn freely by hand uh, or the problem with the stepper motor is with the axis. If the problem is in the axis like the drive uh, portion or the ball screw. As you can see I'm turning it by hand so it sort of answers that but what I'm going to do just to be sure is disconnect the coupler right there and then run the motor on its own. So that's what I'll do now. Alright, I've disconnected the coupler. It's still on there, but it's loose, so it should be able to turn fairly easily. Um, can, there's power to that axis right now, so it shouldn't be able to turn, but I'm, I'm turning the coupler without turning other, any other components on the shaft. So, here's the Y once again. Here's the X. There's the uh, flat spot there on the stepper motor. So one of the things I've done as far as the diagnosis of this problem is concerned is actually checking the winding resistance on the motor. And the way that I did that, these four wires right here, 308, 309, 310, and 311, uh, go to the stepper motor on the X axis. Tormach has instructions in the manual as far as probing. Uh, well, they have they don't have instructions for probing. What they have is uh, resistances expected between each of the wires. So in other words, you check 308, <coughs> the, uh, the um, resistance, that's the term I'm looking for, between 308 and 309 should be small, uh, less than 2 ohms. Uh, and should have continuity between the two and then 310 and 311 uh, should not connect to 308 at all and then you probe 310 you're supposed to uh, check 309 and 311 309 should have uh, no continuity and 311 should have uh, resistance it should have continuity and resistance of less than 2 ohms so I checked that out uh, I probed at the terminals everything worked fine uh, then I you never can tell when you're connecting other stuff to the system how it's going to affect it so I disconnected the wires from the green block checked them individually and the, the results came out the same so that tells me that the stepper motor itself is good and I think that what that means is even though I've diagnosed the um, the um, stepper motor drivers by uh, switching the cables I moved this cable here that cable there and it kept the same issue on the uh, it kept kept the same issue and kept it on the same axis. I'm gonna try switching the uh, drives out. Let's see how that goes. Alrighty, we've got troubleshooting success. Taking a look at the drivers right now. Uh, the position, as far as control is concerned, X, Y, and Z. That's the order that the uh, stepper motor drivers are in. Well, I have taken the X driver out, moved it to the Y position, taking the Y out, moved it to the X position. So they're now switched. Here's the result. The X axis sounds just fine. Y axis. Not so much. And that was the result of the faulty stepper, so what I'm going to do so far, sorry, a faulty stepper motor driver. So I'm going to take out the um, bad driver and get a replacement. I've got here the Tormach lead shine replacement for the uh, Series 2 stepper drivers. My uh, stepper driver failed, and Tormach has since replaced their previous stepper drivers with a new stepper driver. Document included. There's some wiring changes. Cover that in a little bit. But here's the 
current stepper driver. Now this is not the polyphase version. They do have lead shine polyphase stepper drivers, but this is this is not one of those. It's a direct replacement for the Series 2 hardware. All right, this is the old one. Uh, this is the new one. They've made some changes to how the uh, wiring is set up. We're, when we see them installed, this is what we're looking at here. Uh, this being the top side as it's installed. A couple things about this here. The uh, lead shine driver here on the right versus the original one, there are some dip switch settings that need to be changed. This is the setting that it needs to be at for X and Y. The settings that's at presently, I think these are probably from the factory. In fact, they don't even look like they're fully engaged in up or down. Anyway, um, the uh, do have to change these settings depending on which axis it's for. I'm replacing the x-axis. It's the x-axis that broke. It's this, my dear, is the x-axis stepper motor right there. X-axis moves the machine table left to right. Can I see? Not right now because I don't have it hooked up or I don't have it turned on, but I will do it very shortly. All right, when looking at how to rewire this um, stepper driver, one of the things that uh, Tormach explains in the document, <clears throat> which I think they do, I know that when I called them about it, they explained to me uh, when I was ordering the stepper driver in the first place that the order of these has switched. So it's, uh, let's do the old one first. So ground is on top. Positive voltage is uh, the next one down, then it's P2, A plus, A minus, and then B plus, B minus. A plus, A minus are now at the top, B plus, B minus. So the order is the same. They've just shifted up. And then the AC and AC replace the ground and positive voltage. From my understanding, this, uh, this stepper driver will run on AC as well as... Um, uh, the DC which we are supplying in the Tormach. So you can actually switch these two plugs. And in this case, the X is labeled uh, 303 and 302. The Y is labeled uh, 305 and 304. Let's see if I can rotate it here. 305 and 304. So those will now go to the bottom. The order doesn't matter. One thing worth mentioning here, this is the plug that uh, I'll be hooking the wire into. The wires will come in through here. They're tightened down here. The uh, the plug is the same between the old stepper driver and the new one. Exactly the same geometry. And switch them between. In fact, let me do that. See, it goes on in this orientation here. You remember the the orientation of the wires. A plus uh, down to B minus. A plus down to B minus. Now watch what happens when I do this. Pick it up, switch it around. So it's not a direct switch, you know, not top to bottom. It's actually reversing the orientation. So that's one thing to note when you're switching the, the wires over. It's not just a matter of shifting all four of these up and these down too because you're also switching the plug over. So it's more than a simple change there. So remember A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. I'm actually working on the Y axis. So 312, 313, 314, 315, I need to switch those over. Now remember, <clears throat> the plug is oriented like this, but it plugs into, let's see if I can hold it correctly here, it plugs into the new driver like that. So this is the top now, and it was the bottom before. All right, you can see I've switched the first wire over right now. It's wire 312 on the table here, y-axis. 312 is A+. Plus. A plus is the top on this plug here. See, it's the third from the top, but the uh, topmost of the, uh, the uh, A plus, B plus combination here. So now that I've done that, it's a little bit more clear that the plug is in different orientations. So it's at the top here. I took it out of that position, the third one from the top. It's now at the top here, and you can tell that the uh, plug is in a 
one-handed business is not the most fun. Ugh. I play with this all day rather than just showing you somehow. So plugs are opposite. I'll get this eventually. So it's opposite. All right, I've now switched over all the motor drive um, wires. I haven't done the power yet, so you can see the orientation again. Remember, this was the top before, 305 and 304 at the top. And now 312, 13, 14, and 15 are the wires the rest of the way down. So we're on track for everything right now. A plus B plus, sorry, A plus A minus, B plus B minus. 12, 13, 14, and 15. It's all there. I'm going to keep the, uh, just for the sake of consistency, I guess, I'll keep the uh, uh, the power and 305, 304 orientation top to bottom here as well. So I'll do that next. All right, the wiring switch is done now. See my order, 312, 13, 14, 15, 305, and 304. And now I will hook it up. So you'll see that this is the orientation the plug was in before. Uh, forget about the wires, just I'm talking about the green plug only matches this. It's now going to go in more like this. So that's my new orientation. All right, the dip switch settings have been changed. Let me hook the ribbon up now. The uh, notch is there and it's over here, so it goes opposite of what I was thinking the first time. Seems to be seated. All right, the stepper driver is installed, the ribbon cable is connected, and I was just noticing that I got a little bit of an unexpected problem when it comes to hooking this thing up, and that problem is that I can't turn the plug because there's not enough wire sticking out of the uh, uh, plastic loom there. All right, I got the loom cover off, and I found that a, a light tug on the wires gave me a little bit more room over there, and I was able to hook it up. So everything's laid out nicely now, so that's why it's satisfied with how it looks. So close it up and power up the mill. The uh, driver powered on properly, so everything looks good there. Let me start the machine here. Everything looks good. Let me jog the machine. Here's X, which should be just fine. Everything looks good. Here's Y. It's going the correct direction. Oil the machine real quick. <clears throat> and then rep all, and we'll go from there. Well, looks good. All right, I'd say that's a success.